Hi everyone, welcome to Open to Love. Today is day two and we have with us the incredible Jess Penilli, who is an empowerment coach. And Jess, thank you so much for joining us. I'm really excited to have you here. I'm so excited. Thank you so much for having me. Well, the reason I wanted to get you on, Jess, is because I'm always struck by your deep authenticity. And, and so that's why I reached out and I said, I'd love for you to speak um, during this festival. Just because like what you what you do in your everyday work, it's all about helping women reconnect and repair their relationship. Can you tell us a little bit about, about that and, and why you do the work that you do? Yeah, definitely. I, I found that, so before this type of work of what I was doing, I was actually a personal trainer for six years and I found that there was a deep disconnect from well-being as a whole, right? You know, all these women that I was coaching were working on their physical, but there was still such a disconnect with themselves. And I realized it was the mental, it was the emotional, it was the spiritual side of things. And so one of the biggest reasons why I transitioned into the work that I was doing was because I thought how can I really help these women feel in love with themselves but wholeheartedly not just on a physical front not just okay I look good in the mirror or I'm reaching these pbs in the gym which are great which are you know so good and gratifying in itself but I thought there's so much more because if we're not actually going deeper rather than the surface level stuff that we're actually not going to know who we really are. We're not going to know what fills up our cup. We're not going to really understand what self-love is for us as an individual. And so when I started to learn about it more, and at the time I was diving deep into my own personal development, I was like, there is just such a gap between women really loving and knowing themselves and, and this higher self version. So I thought, how can I actually bridge that gap? Wow, I actually got goosebumps when you said that about like having this vision of themselves as the highest, you know, version of themselves. And then you're helping like merge those two things. I love that, Jess. That's cool. And in terms of relationship with self, what what it makes that so integral in the, the inner work that you teach to your clients? Yeah, definitely. I think what we forget in this world where we live in such a busy world right and we are so disconnected in so many ways whether it's social media whether it's other relationships whether it's our career and our work life or finances whatever it may be we become connected to those external factors when everything actually stems from within everything that we are attracting into our reality everything that makes up makes us up on who we actually are is how we feel about ourselves, is how we view ourselves, how we navigate our life, how we have a relationship with ourselves, which will then set the tone for not only relationships with other people, whether that's romantic, platonic family, but also our relationship with money, our relationship with social media, our relationship with showing up with, you know, whether that it's the environment or hobbies or whatever it does. And so it's so important to be able to know yourself before you're able to have a relationship with anything in the external world. Mm -hmm. and, and what are like the components of, of having that relationship with yourself, Jess? Yeah, so that's a big part of what I want to speak about today. And I have a framework that I, I, I share with my private clients and something that I'm, I'm so proud of kind of understanding and being able to share. And I'm, I'm, I'm glad to be able to share it today. So I always say that it takes I have an art framework, right? So ART, and it's the three selves. So self-awareness, self-responsibility, and self-trust. And these are the three main components that I have seen and that I teach my private clients in, okay, so how do we actually get to having this healthy, safe relationship, cultivating this relationship with ourselves, one that we are able to maintain, one that we can sustain, and one that we are able to feel comfortable in and we are able, I think the key that I found is to be able to feel safe within ourselves. And so these three areas of awareness, of responsibility and trust, I found that if you're able to embody each and actually learn what it means to you, because awareness 
even though what I'm going to share with you today, I'm going to give you some tips and, and share with, you know, how do we tap into these three things? Remember all of these segments, I guess, of, aware, of um, trust and responsibility and, and awareness, they're different for everyone. They look different for everyone. And that's the most important thing is that you want to be able to tailor all of these, these selves, these three selves for yourself as an individual. And so I guess I'll dive straight in and we'll, we'll go into it. Is that, yeah, yeah. let's, let's dive straight in. Amazing. Yeah, let's dive straight in. And if anyone, if anyone's watching, please go ahead and type your questions or comments, mm -hmm. or if you can relate, just go ahead and type that in the comments and, and I'll jump in and relay that back to Jess. Um, and also if you're watching the replay, type replay so that we can see who's, um, who's following up later. So yeah, go ahead, Jess. And um, that was a beautiful intro. I'm super excited to, to hear the rest yeah. of what you've got to teach. Amazing. So I'll get straight into it. So as I was saying, I teach a framework called the art framework, the three selves. And today specifically, I'm going to go through individually what this means, right? Because I'm sure we're all aware, everyone that is watching this, whether it's live or whether it's the replay, we know that we need some form of self-awareness. We need to take responsibility. We want to build that trust with ourselves. But the question always begs, like, how do we actually do that in a tangible way, right? And there's a lot of things that we may see on the internet, we may hear, we may learn, we may pick up. And sometimes it's like, okay, it's nice to know what it actually is, which I'll go through as well. But it's like, how do we actually get there? How do we implement that in everyday life and be able to take that on my journey of reaching our higher self or reaching our desired self? So the first one is awareness. So I want you to think as I'm speaking, like what is self-awareness to you? What does that actually mean? And, and as I said, we're all going to have very similar views or very similar understandings of what awareness means to us. But for me, I think awareness is really about conscious living, right? It's about not having such a reactive lifestyle. We want to aim to transition to a proactive lifestyle, right? So consciously living through our day, consciously choosing our behaviors, consciously choosing our reactions and our emotions and having the control over our life, right? And, you know, just a, just a little sidestep from there, the, the goal of this, of the three selves and connecting back to self is to have the control over your life because we live again, in a, a world where we often get controlled by external things, or not even that, we often get controlled by our own emotions, by our own thoughts, whatever's happening up in here. And we, we forget that we actually have the control over every single thing, right? Yes, of course, in our external environment, I always need to say, there are always things that we don't have control over, We've been going through something for the past 18 months that we don't have control over. Yes, of course. But start to think about right now as, as I'm speaking, what are the things in, in our life that we actually have control over? And so in regards to connecting back to yourself, we, we have control over our behaviours. We have control over our emotions. We have control over our reactions to other people. We have control of how we take on someone else's, um, what feedback they're giving us, right? Whether that's positive or negative, we all have control. So then let's come full circle. How do we relate this back to awareness? Now, self-awareness is exactly that, taking the control and consciously living. Think about how many times that you go throughout your day and you're actually reacting to everything. You're not consciously living, right? And this is so simple, and this is about living on autopilot. This is as simple as when you get up in the morning, is your first thing to turn off your alarm, to go brush your teeth, or maybe get up and have breakfast and brush your teeth and then get ready for work and then drive on the same route for work, go to the same cafe for your coffee, right? This is all a form of reactivity. This is all a form of autopilot. Are those things necessarily negative or bad? Of course not, right? That's our routine. That's how we start up our day. But these are the things that make up in the big grand scheme of things make up us being on autopilot. So this first point of awareness is really for you to think, all right, well, in my day-to-day -day routine, how can I take back some awareness? How can I not just live life? 
just because I'm living it, right? And that, that's one of the biggest questions that years and years ago, I started to ask myself, how can I just stop living life? Like, how can I actually be involved in my life and not just keep going? And so one thing that I share with my clients that really helps because, because we live in such a reactional lifestyle, right? We, we often, the word trigger gets thrown around a lot, right? Whether it's someone, my partner has triggered me or my boss has triggered me. Now, the way that I teach triggers is triggers is actually feedback, right? Triggers are telling you something about yourself. They're mirroring something about yourself. They're giving you something to learn. Whether that thing you want to amplify or dissolve, it doesn't matter. But we should be taking those triggers as feedback, right? So that's kind of like a byproduct of just living reactive, reactively. Now, from there... One thing that I teach my clients is the 90-second breathing rule. And I urge you all to start learning this. I urge you all to go about your day and to implement this. So what is the 90-second breathing rule? The 90-second breathing rule is you take little pockets throughout your day where you literally stop, whether you put on a timer on your phone and you just breathe for 90 seconds, right? Now, this is so effective because what it does in whatever state that you're in, it starts to connect your mind, your body and your soul, right? It brings about that awareness. You're actually um, stimulating that awareness to come inside your body and to reflect it out in the external world. So, Think about when you say for a moment you're driving and someone cuts you off in traffic, right? And you may get triggered, you may get angry, you may get very upset that that's happened. Take a moment, instead of going for the initial reaction and getting angry and, and bringing that into the rest of your day, bringing those negative emotions to the rest of your day, stop for 90 seconds and breathe and connect your, this is about regulating your nervous system, right? because your nervous system reacts on default. It strives off survival mode. And the goal, the goal is always to bring us back into safety mode, right? So just take the time for 90 seconds to calm your nervous system down and actually ask your, yourself the question, how am I reacting? How am I choosing to react to this situation? And it's such a powerful situation because instead of going into your default of, okay, someone's cut me off, I'm going to get angry, I'm going to yell, I'm going to scream, I'm going to get to the office, I'm going to be moody, I'm going to reflect, I'm going to project that mood onto my co-workers, then I'm probably going to get told off because my boss is going to bring it and see how it has this domino effect, right? So if we actually decide that we have a choice and we're going to regulate our nervous system, we're going to stop, take a breath and then go throughout our day. And this is actually something that I just do. It's become a default for me. So I reckon I'll do this at least five times a day. As I'm going throughout my day, every time I can feel, it's, it's, it's really in moments where I feel that my nervous system is about to go into overdrive, right? It's about to go a little bit crazy. So I'm thinking, all right, I'm feeling a little bit dysregulated. I'm feeling a bit disconnected. What can I do? And I'll just sit. 90 seconds is nothing out of your 24-hour period of the day, right? Minus, what, eight hours for sleep, right? It's, it's really nothing to take to be able to calm yourself and not live a reactional lifestyle. So coming back to what I was saying at the start of awareness, like this is one part. This is why it's the first part of the art framework is, okay, I want to choose to have an awareness of how I'm living my life right because we make the mistake of everything else the external things live our life for us so this first point of awareness is really okay how can I live my life in on my own accordance how can I do this for myself now this streams on this is why it goes in this certain order this streams on to the second point of responsibility. So self-responsibility is all about, okay, yes, we're asking the question, am I taking control of my life? But am I actually taking responsibility for the way I'm behaving? Am I taking responsibility for the way I'm projecting onto people? Am I taking responsibility for the things that are happening in my life? A lot of the time you will see <clears throat> people who blame, 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 right? Live in victim mentality. Now, my opinion on this is, yes, of course, we are human beings. There is always going to be things that upset us, that make us angry, that put us in a fearful state. But then it's your choice to take the responsibility to get out of that. 
It is your choice to say, all right, enough is enough. I've sat on this low vibrational frequency for too long. It is time for me to get out of that. And you will notice, think now, right? <clears throat> I'm sure there's at least one person in your life who consistently blames, who consistently complains about their life, who complains about their relationships or what they attract into the life, who complains about their job but actually never does anything about it. Never choose, it's always everyone else's fault, right? It's always everyone else is doing this or this has happened. They never take the responsibility. So I urge you, yes, think of this person in your life, but where in your life are you constantly blaming or you're complaining? And remember, you know, a bit of law of attraction, whatever you continuously complain about or sit on that frequency about, you are going to attract more. That's how it works, right? That's how it works. That's law of attraction. So what I like to ask myself, another question, and this is a great journaling prompt as well, in moments where you are <clears throat> struggling in, you know, sitting in that victim mentality, to be able to take responsibility, I would ask myself, is this bringing me closer to my highest self? Is this something that is bringing me closer to who I want to become, who I desire to be? And I can guarantee that 100% of the time, the thing that you were complaining about or the thing that you were blaming, continuously doing that is not going to bring you to your higher self is not going to bring you into a state of, this is my desired reality. This is how I want to live. So now I ask you, have a think of everything in your life, your work, your relationships, romantic, platonic, uh, your finances, whatever, your health and well-being. right? Where can you stop blaming? Where can you stop complaining? And where can you actually take responsibility? Where can you say, all right, enough is enough. I, and that this comes to awareness. This is why these two are tied in nicely together. Where can I have the awareness? And then the next step is, all right, I am actually choosing to do something about it. I'm choosing to live differently. The difference between people who excel in life and attract what they want and who sit on a frequency of gratitude and love and the, and the difference between those types of people and the people that stay the same and live on a hamster wheel are those who actually take responsibility, who actually realize, okay, I'm doing myself a disservice by continuously being like this. Like this isn't serving me whatsoever. So, so I said, ask yourself and journal on the journal prompt, is this bringing me closer to my higher self? Is this bringing me closer to who I want to become, to who I want to be? Now, when you have these two, this is the first step in the uh, framework of awareness and responsibility. When you're able to do these, and, and as I said, these are things that I teach in my one-on-one -on -one mentorship, this brings you into self-trust. The ultimate goal is to have trust with yourself. And I know a lot of the time, if this is a new concept for people, it may be really hard to, to think that you don't have trust with yourself, right? Because we live with ourselves every day. And it's like, of course, of course, I trust myself. Of course, I listen to everything I say. But we don't. We don't trust ourselves. That's why we default to old behaviors and to unhelpful patterns. That's why we always... Every, every time we think we're making a choice for ourselves, we may default back to behavior that does not serve us or to relation, we attract relationships that do not just, uh, serve us because we don't trust ourselves, right? Now, to trust ourselves, it's about deciding that we're going to trust ourselves. And I'm going to give a little activity for you all to go about your day and do and to strengthen. So trust is really strengthening your intuition, right? It's about listening to that inner voice and knowing that you have all of the answers within you. You have everything you need, right? You just need to listen to yourself. And that's why we first want to cultivate self-awareness and self-responsibility because that's really going to help you to actually trust what's happening. Now, Something that I give my clients to do and constantly do, like I, I've been doing this for years now and I want you to go away and I want you to go do it as well, is a little intuition uh, test. So 
I want you to go about your day and remember intuition is always the first thing, right? Operating from love is always the first thing that pops up in your mind. The, the thing that is straight away after is your ego, right? And, and that's normally what we listen to. And that's why we have a lack of trust in ourselves because we'll listen to that ego. We'll listen to our old um, subconscious conditioning, right? We don't actually listen to the first innate thing that comes up in our head. So remember, the goal for trust is to operate from a place of love, not from a place of ego. So as you go about your day, I want you to ask yourself questions that's going to bring about your intuition and your ego. And I want you to listen to that first, that first little voice that says, even if to you in, in that ego stance does not make sense. So I'll give you an example. What first really made me do this, and this has really stuck with me, and I always share this, is a few years ago, I was driving home and I had two options to get home, both right and left. And both of these options, they would have got me home in the exact same time, right? But I thought, all right, this is when I was starting to strengthen the trust within myself, starting to strengthen my intuition. As I'm coming up to the T-junction, I asked myself, all right, which way should I go? straight away my intuition goes right but after that my intuition goes left you've always gone left just go left and so even though my ego is right I've always gone left but remember that again is conditioning that is doing the same thing and that's the trap that we get stuck in is we listen to our ego and we get stuck doing the same thing we live on autopilot in life and so I thought, okay, no. And this is where you have to assert control and take control of, of your reaction and your behavior. I thought, no, I heard straight away, let's go right instead of left. So I went right. Now, I went right, I got home in the same amount of time. Did anything eventuate from that? No, but this is proof that the more that you do this and the more that you listen to your intuition and that first thing, the more that you can trust it on the bigger decisions you need to make in life, the more that your, your, your instinct and your intuition is actually going to tell you the answers and the more that it's going to get easier for you to operate from love and not from ego and to be able to say, like, for example, should I take this job promotion to ask the bigger questions and to connect and no, and I've been doing this for a few months, everything, everything I will ask, I will be driving or I'll be like, okay, which cafe should I go to? And sometimes something will happen. I'll bump into an old friend or, you know, something will eventuate from that day, right? And that's your intuition, that's your trust leading you to something different. And so what I have learned, and we, we all know is that, that building that trust in, and strengthening the bond with your intuition is something that is never going to fail you. I can honestly say over the years after, you know, practicing this, there has never been a time where I've listened and trusted myself where I've failed or where it's been the wrong answer, right? Because we know within ourselves. So what I want you to do is, is go ahead, go about your day today, go about your week and ask yourself these little questions, even if it's as small as, okay, should I go to this cafe for my coffee or should I go to this cafe for my coffee? And listen to whatever comes up first and start to allow your intuition to take you on this journey of self-trust. Start to allow your intuition to be able to show you things and bring to your awareness of things that maybe you, you never would have thought of. And one thing on top of that that I want to give you that really helps with building the trust within yourself is keeping a small promise to yourself every day, having a daily anchor, right? So what is one thing that you can do for yourself every single day that is going to strengthen the trust within yourself? And it can be something big, it can be something small, but what is something that can really bring you, like I say, I call it a daily anchor because you want it to really ground you. You want it to center you back to your day and to be able to say it, keeping a small promise to yourself is really all about saying like, I am worthy of trusting myself. It's okay to trust myself. It's okay to be like this, to be safe within my own body and to listen to my own intuition. It's okay. So 
start to think of, okay, what can I do every single day as a small promise? What can I do every single day to ground myself? You know, I had a period of time earlier this year, I was in Sydney for a little bit. And one of my, my, my daily anchor, I was in Sydney for about five weeks. And my daily anchor was having a cup of tea every morning and see how simple that is, right? But to have this cup of tea and just to be present. So I would literally just sit, enjoy my tea, think of things I'm grateful for. I wouldn't work. I wouldn't be on my phone. I wouldn't be distracted by anything. I would spend that, you know, five to 10 minutes of really just grounding myself and keeping that small promise. And, and it became something that became a habit and it became something that I looked forward to and I knew that was my time, my time to reflect, my time to have to myself, my time to really strengthen the bond that I had with myself. So that's, that's what I ask of you is to take your time to really just think about what can I do for myself every single day and what can I, how can I ground myself? How can I ground myself? Because that is going to lead into trusting yourself. That is going to lead into strengthening your intuition. And so if we come full circle and we, we look at this art framework and we look at everything that I've spoken about today, right? So the three selves, self-awareness, self-responsibility and self-trust. These three concepts, and this is why it's a huge thing that I bring on and I share with my clients, these three concepts will really help you if we come full circle, help you understand that you have a pathway to connect to yourself, you are able to connect with yourself. And so if you were practicing these things, if you were practicing being self-aware and practicing responsibility, you are automatically going to help yourself with self-trust, right? You are going to help yourself build that connection you have. So as I said, let's let's kind of like wrap it up so we can make some notes. But first thing, awareness, 90 seconds of breathing. How can you have little pockets of your day of doing that every single day? Second thing, taking responsibility, actually taking the control for your life. Is this bringing me closer to my higher self? Is this bringing me closer to my higher self? That's what we always want to ask ourselves. And then from there, trust, you know, doing the intuition test, being able to go about your day, ask yourself, should I go to this cafe? Should I go to that cafe? Should I turn left or right? What should I do, right? And listening to your intuition. And then from there, the, the second one for trust is having that daily anchor having something that grounds you, having something that brings you back to who you are. And all of this self-awareness, self-responsibility and self-trust is going to help you connect back to who you really are as a person. It's going to help you take the time to be able to say, okay, this is me. This is a relationship that I have, I have with myself. I'm aware of what I do. I'm taking control. And I trust. I trust the decisions that I make. I trust everything that I'm saying. I trust everything that I'm doing. And that is really the goal there. Oh, I think Rani is frozen a little bit. Rani, are you still there? I think you're frozen on my end. That's all right. We can keep talking. <laughs> I can keep talking <laughs> while we're waiting. There's a bit of frozen. But is there anyone? I have the Facebook stream up. Is there any questions? Hello? Oh, I can't hear you. I'm back. Sorry, my okay. internet connection just dropped out. Sorry, right. Jess, please continue. That's yeah. all right. It was still going. I had it up. I was like, I think yours has dropped out, but that's all right. I like wrapped it up and I was just saying, if anyone has any questions or anything, but yeah, I was just saying, you know, having these, having the understanding of, you know, awareness, responsibility and trust, that's really the basis. And this is why it's the biggest concept in my teachings. Having that 
will help you to be able to connect with yourself first. And if we come full circle to what I was saying at the beginning is being able to have that relationship with yourself and heal that relationship with yourself is the number one priority. It should be the number one priority. It is the most important thing. And then everything else comes from that. And so Jess, um, if anyone has any questions, please feel free to post them in the comments and we can come back to that. But in the meantime, Jess, I, I just wanted to ask you one more question, um, which, which is this. Having this beautiful foundation and this connection to yourself with, through awareness and responsibility and trust, um, how does, once we have that framework and, um, and relationship already in place, how does that change everything else outside of us, the way we move through the world? Yeah, great question. I love this question. When you have an understanding of the relationship that you have with yourself and you have the trust and you have the connection, right, and you're not mm -hmm. disconnected from everything that's happening, it sets a standard for the relationship that you have with other people, the relationships you have with your work life, with, which of course go, feeds into your finances. And it really shows, okay, this is who I am. This is what I'm gonna put up with. These are my boundaries. Um, this is how I am living my life and navigating. And when you are able to have that connection, you also aren't swayed by anything or anything else. You have a knowingness with inside yourself that this is who I am and I'm going to live life to my fullest, whatever fullest looks like to you. Whatever you're, when I say higher self, it's again, it is different to every single person, right? There is no right, there is no wrong. My higher self is gonna look different to your higher self and everyone that is watching, right? But it's about being congruent with that. And when you are congruent with that, that is a life of purpose. That is, that is a life that you are actually doing what feels right. And you know, you know when you, you lack connection with yourself because you feel out of alignment. You feel lost. You feel like you don't know who you are and, and who, where you're going, right? You're out of alignment, whatever that means for you. So when you are able to establish this, you set the standard, you set the tone for your life and you also know, okay, this is how I am going to live life. This is what's important to me. And this is the purpose that I'm living in. And Jess, how does that relate to authenticity? The reason I want to ask you particularly this question out of all of the guests that I have for this 10 day program is, is I see you as like such an authentic person, you know, because I know you personally, and then I also know you publicly. Mm. Um, and, and I really am blown away and inspired by your authenticity, because that's one of that I love to live by as well. And I just want to hear your take on that concept of authenticity, and how it relates to, to what you were teaching about today. Yeah, so I remember for a very, very long time, I'm 28 now, and I remember for a very, very long time in my 20s, I was so consumed about the fear of what people would think and getting judged and stopping myself from doing things or keeping myself small. And it was only a disservice to myself, right? And I remember when I started to transition into this work, I thought, like, what's the point of living my life when I'm living it for other people? What's the point of not living in the way that is, is, is aligned with me and makes me happy? And don't get me wrong, you know, there's, there's still people who judge or still people who make comments, but in doing all this work and, and things that I've shared today is, is about building that, that strength with yourself to know that it is okay. It is okay to whatever alignment is, however people are what that means to you and being authentic to you what that looks like for you it's okay to be that because people are going to judge and make comments whether whether they like it or whether they don't like it and what I found is the most important thing is the the more further away that you are from yourself the less of the things that you are going to attract that really align with you in life 
You are not going to bring people into your life that are meant for you. You are not going to bring in the opportunities that are meant for you. You are going to put it bluntly, you are going to live a very unhappy life. And that's how I felt for a very long time. And I didn't know why. I didn't know why I felt unhappy with myself. I didn't know why I was keeping myself small and why I wanted to do something, but I would stop myself or I'd live in this fear. And I thought, you know, fuck that. I'm not going to live in that fear anymore. I'm not going to be afraid to show me who I really am. And it's amazing what happens when you actually say, this is who I am. This is how I'm going to be ha act. This is how I'm going to be. And, and you, the, the amount of gravitational pull for everything that is meant to be with you will just, it will, it's exponential. And I, and I could not believe it. And I could not believe how much happier I felt inside when I, I presented myself the way I wanted to. And I always say, you know, and I, of course, I take this into my coaching. One of the things I say to any new client that I'm potentially bringing on is I am a very hands-on coach. I'm not going to bullshit you. And I, and this is the way that I act on my Instagram stories, the way that I, I teach, like that is who I am. Right. Yeah. And I'm like, this is me. This is what you get. And my clients appreciate that. Right. Because I never want to come off that. I'm, I'm not someone who I'm not. And I thought, you know, that it's, it's funny on the online space, especially, you see a lot of people who are scared to really be who they are or to voice their opinion or, or to speak or dress or to act in a certain way. And I just think, you know, number one, as cliche as it does sound, like life is too short. Like life is too short to be anything but who you really are and what makes you happy. And, you know, I, and that's another big reason why I do what I do because I never want any any one, any woman specifically for my coaching to ever feel like they can't be who they are. And that's a lot of the reason why people get so unhappy because they, they feel they have to shrink themselves down. They feel like they can't speak a certain way or they can't dress a certain way. But I'm like, no, do what, what is your higher self? What does he or she do? And then do that because it's only going to make you happier and you're only going to up level and you can't, cannot up level your consciousness or get to where you want to be if you are not stepping into your true authentic self. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's so true. 100% true. And Jess, sorry, but when you were saying that all, it just made me want to ask another question. I hope you don't mind. We do have a little bit more time. So yeah, I want to, I'd love to know, um, I see in all of your teachings, it all comes back to a foundation of, of self-empowerment, you know, like that underpins all of your work. And I just want to hear, like, why is that so important? Like to be able to step into your own power. Why is that such a, um, you know, like a, a breakthrough concept mm -hmm. for, for people in their own personal journeys? You see, so many people live a life that, they're miserable, they're unhappy, that they don't know that they actually have a choice to be anything different, right? And the biggest thing, and this is why I call myself an empowerment coach, is how can you stop disempowering yourself and actually empower yourself? How can you actually put yourself in a position where you are, you have the power of your life, you have the control, right? And 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 the people that you see that are out of control or are very unhappy or who, as I said earlier, complain and consistent with complaining are those that don't know that they are able to, they have, first of all, we have that power within us. We, it, it may be really squished down deep, deep inside, but we have that power within us. But it's so important for me to share that because I know, I know what it feels like. I was there. I was there for such a long, 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 long time. And I know what it feels like to feel like you don't have any control over your life or you don't know where to go and how to navigate. And, and maybe, you know, a lot of people have that defeatist attitude of, okay, this is it. You know, I, I have an okay job and I have an okay relation uh, relationships in my life. It's okay. You know, it's not that bad. I, for me, that, that the whole notion of saying it's not that bad, like that is wild to me. If anyone's listening and you have that, that self-talk, like, no, 
it's time to step out of that. Like where can you, do, and it just starts by the small steps. I know it can be overwhelming when I speak about all of this and it's like, oh my God, like where do I start? What do I do? You know, how do I navigate? But it's about the small steps. That's how you empower yourself by small little building blocks. And that's why it's important to me because I never want to see someone just cruise. I think cruising through life is just a way to become miserable and not to live life to your full potential. As I said, my desired reality, my higher self is going to look different to everyone. There is no right. There is no wrong. I cannot emphasize that enough, right? And, you know, I it doesn't mean like me, everyone needs to start their own business or live the life that I do. No, you can find happiness. In, and I love to put this point. You can find, there's a lot of, um, what's the word? A lot of shit given to people with nine to fives and stuff like that. No, we, first of all, we need those jobs. Of course we do, right? It's not, entrepreneurship is not for everyone. So you can find happiness, but it's about asking yourself, am I in a position that does make me feel fulfilled? Am, am I doing what I want? Or am I too scared because I've been in this job for six, seven years and it's just comfortable? That's what we do. We live in our comfort zone. How can we get out of our comfort zone? And I actually share comfort zone in a different way than my clients. So normally, you know, we see comfort zone is this, right? And we get told this is us in our comfort zone. Let's get out. I always say this is our comfort zone. You're in it. How can we expand it? So everything that is out of your comfort zone, we're bringing in, right? We're pulling into us. How can we expand? And once we reach that expansion, that is our new level of consciousness. And that's how we start again, right? Then we've reached this new level. All right, that's comfortable now. How can we expand the next one? And this is how we continue with leveling up. So it's about don't get out of your comfort zone. Expand that. Pull everything that you want into that. I love that, Jess. That's so cool. I love it. And um, I can also relate to what you're saying about, you know, just being like going with the flow for so many years. I feel like I didn't uh, ask for what I wanted in life because I kind of was locked into a little bit of the identity of the the easygoing one. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So so then I I kind of just found myself living a life that that what it checked all the boxes on the surface right like I had so many great things but deep down I just didn't feel that full fulfillment um yeah and so then finally I had the courage to empower myself in order to to take back my control and to make steps that are aligned with my highest self so yeah, I can totally relate. And I'm sure a lot of people watching here too can relate. And I know Jess that you've got a lot of um, amazing ways in which people can work with you. You've got your Woman Up monthly program yeah. and then also your one-on-one, -on -one, the Lifestyle by Design. Maybe you can just um, let people know about that and also where to find you. Right, of course, of course. So Lifestyle by Design is my private coaching. It's my one-on-one -on -one mentorship. And this is a three-month mentorship that I work exclusively with women and it's all tailored I see a lot of cookie cutter crap out there when it comes to my type of coaching and mine is as I said earlier like I'm a very hands-on coach so I tailor everything to each individual woman right and and I love doing that so that's a three-month mentorship of you know how can we actually get you from a to z and like what does that actually look like like I said it's different to everyone so what can we do together as coach and client to get you there right and so that's the first way to um work with me I second way is woman up monthly is my membership place um page and that is actually open up for enrollment again today as we've got a new month oh, perfect. Really yeah Yay. so i'll be talking a little bit about that on my instagram which i'll share in a sec uh, so woman up monthly is my membership and it's really look it's one of those small steps to take if you're like oh you know private one-on-one -on -one coaching i'm not sure if i'm ready for that investment I would highly, highly recommend Woman Up Monthly. It is, it's less mm -hmm. than $2 a day. It's very affordable. You get so many resources. Like I, I honestly mm -hmm. think there are uh, at least close to 40, 50 video trainings already 
exclusive podcast episodes. Um, you've got challenges, you've got workbooks, right? And every month we work through something different in personal development. And I'm always upgrading, updating when I learn, like I share it with the women. Plus we do group coaching calls as well. So yes, if you, if everything I've said today, you're like, yes, it's ticking the boxes, but you're still a little bit hesitant to take that bigger step into the private coaching I'd highly recommend come check out Woman Up Monthly. As I said, that is open again today for enrollment. And to find everything, the best point of, I guess, contact for me would be my Instagram. So at Jess Finelli, J-E-S-S-P-I-N-I-L-I. Slide into my DMs or everything's in the link in the bio. You can find all of that. Plus, I do have a podcast, the Jessica Pinelli podcast. So you can go listen. I speak more on all this stuff on that. But yeah, that's how you can find me and how you can work with me. Wow. Thank you so much, Jess. I love what you shared with us today. And I truly do appreciate this work that you do. You're so deeply authentic. And it's such powerful gifts that you share with all of your clients. And you're so thorough with all of your teachings and your materials. You're really incredible. And, I, and yeah, I respect you a lot. And thank you so much for coming on. I'm really, really honored to have had you here today. Thank you, Jess. So everyone watching, please leave your comments. Um, and what you got out of this incredible session and what was most impactful for you and what related to you and your journey on, on this path of, of awakening and opening. So thank you so much for tuning in, guys. Oh Thanks, Jess. This and, was so uh, fun. Thank you, thank you so much. And thank you to everyone watching and everyone that tunes into the replay. This has been amazing. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Bye, Jess. See you, everyone. Thanks.